I'm working in this just to remember BAPI, which is a hardware accelerated encoding and, enc and decoding. And specifically, I'm going to talk on or this, doing this on Intel hardware. So let's go. What stands by API with video acceleration, application, programming, interface? No big deal here. So what it is, just to remember BAPI, no. She's getting, uh -huh. this is the worst thing. Okay, okay. now we're with. Uh, what is the API? Well, basically, it's an API specification, just like another API specification. We have a, a header file uh, which shows this API specification, but also it's a library implementation which is sent under the open source MIT license, obviously. And let's start with this. Um, well, what does it do? What maybe BAPI does it do? Well. It enables hardware acceleration decoding, video decoding, and encoding. It does uh, expose in some video entries that there are variable length decoding, cosine transformation, motion compensation, etc. And this variable length decoding is through different codecs. We have, uh, at least in the Intel backend, we have these uh, uh, codecs. Also, it provides a uh, picture bending and rendering. You have an image, you have some uh, picture you want to blend, like uh, subtitles, for example. And also there is, in some backend, there is uh, video post-processing. And this video post-processing uh, supports color balance, for example, skin tone enhancement, uh, the interlace, scaling, interlace, and so on. So let's start with the implementation. Well, basically the implementation is called UBA, and it's basically on a front-end. And this front-end open and registered a backend. It offers um, and it hooks all the different functions that are requiring this in the API specification, and that's it. So, how many backends do we have? Well, we have the the Intel one that is the most common use in the Intel hardware, obviously. And there are many others that are right now quite under maintained. So we have a lot of bugs about them, but because nobody's maintained them. Which basically there are breaches between one, uh, another APIs and BAPI. For example, there is the VDPAO interface, uh, the XVBA interface, and the PVR uh, bridge. Um, many people are using uh, be the PAL driver. But there is another solution that I'm quite happy about it. It is the Gallium driver that Julian told me about it, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, because the MISA guys are doing this common layer uh, API between different APIs for the state trackers, and for free they have this new bridge transformation between one API to another API. And this is, for example, uh, a bridge between be the PAL to BAPI. And also there is a new one, uh, uh, backend done by Intel, that is the hybrid driver. And this one uh, provides some even hardware decoding and encoding or software decoding and encoding if it's not available in the current hardware. Because right now we have this problem that some hardware provides some codecs and some of them can, be done, can do some things and others do other things. And so we might find these troubles. With that thing, it seems that that can be fixed. So it's complemented by, by software uh, codecs. Can I ask a really quick question? Yeah, sure. I know you have a team, but I'm not familiar with the PVR bridge. What's the PVR bridge? It's, uh, I guess it's the power, be power uh, the, he's asking about uh, what is the PVR driver. I'm not quite sure about it either, but it's a, I think it's about the, the some, it's a PBR, it's, it's, a, it's a GPU for embedded system, as far as I know. So, the so Power VR. So. so, just for example, we have here a BA Info is a comment that shows information of your current uh, library and ask for the back end what does it provide. And we have this library that has the, I, the, the, the Intel one, the version, and also shows which uh, profiles and entry point supports. So we have here a lot of encoders, decoders. We have see the, the video length decoder, the, the encoder slice for many different codecs and profiles. We also have the video post-processing. 
So it's important to, 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 to know at least in this backend uh, which is supported by your hardware. Here's another example using this BDPOW transformation that is comment error that is under maintained, and you can show only the, the decoders, no post processors, and see. And this is the NVIDIA driver backend. So, what is the API? The API, what does it provide? Well, it provides a different um, concept that is the display. Display basically is attached to a protocol, display protocol, which is the X11, the RM, Wayland, Android, etc. Uh, we also have a config. A config is a requested B uh, entry point and a codec associated to that entry point. Uh, and we have a context. The context is basically the pipeline, as we know in GStreamer, but in this case for, for, for our API. We have a, a surface. All of these are IDs. They are not exactly, they are handlers to the structures. They are, they are just integer numbers that point some, or they are, uh, pointed to another structure which is opaque. It doesn't, you can access directly to them. Uh, they have the surface ID, which is the render targets, and the client doesn't have direct access to that. We cannot see directly what is in that surface that we are rendering. And finally, we have the buffers, which is uh, how we transfer data from the CPU to our hardware space, for example. And they have data, parameters, quantization metrics, etc. So this is a brief example of how is MPG decoding. We, we remove all the glue code and we always keep the, the, the main stuff. We create a display from an X11 display. We create a config of MMPEG2 from a uh, VDL entry point and we get the, the, the configuration. Then we create a surface, one surface with this format and we create a context with the, with the configuration, with the surface, and how we can, well, and the width and the size, and the size of the frame. After that, we fill the data, we create the buffers and fill them with, with the data what we want to, to process. There is the pick param, the, the quantization matrix, the slice params. This is something important we have to, I have to stress here, that BAPI works uh, in the slice levels. Uh, there is not frame level as most of the of the video decoding stuff, so a frame can be composed by several si slices. So we have to provide to the API information, meta information of each slice, not only from each each frame. So the parser has to do more lo more work then in order to to parameterize all these buffers that we have to provide to the to the API. Um, and we send all that information to the surface to be, well, we begin the picture with the surface. We add all the, the buffers we created. We end the pictures. We wait to the, to the machine to do all the operation of the surface with the sync operation. And then we render that surface under the X11 window with all those parameters and so on. So that's much of this. So now we get on what is GStreamer VAPI. Um, there's two things that is composed in GStreamer BAPA. Mainly this uh, helper library that is called uh, Leaf GStreamerBAPA and a set of GStreamer el elements. Those elements support GStreamer ranging from 1.2 to 1.6, now with compilers in master, 1.7. Uh, finally, we have to drop the support for 0.10 and 1.0. <laughs> Uh, we have to support all this. Um, well, the library. The library mostly is a wrapper for all the BA concepts into a glib friendly manner. But it doesn't use G object, neither GST mini object, none of that. It creates their own tree hierarchy, and the base class is GST mini, mini object, and from then we. we we have a VAPI display, a VAPI object that has a display associated, that is a surface, and all the concepts was we saw earlier are more or less represented in this way, adding more constrictions in the structure. Uh, yeah. Uh, how do we use this library? Uh, it's more or less like a common G-object code. There is, we create an X11, this is for uh, an encoder of H264. 
We create a display from X11. We uh, instantiate the encoder of H264. And we create a GST video codec state, which is a malloc or a GNU with a width, a height, and a frame rate. And we set that uh, codec state to the encoder instance. instance. Then we fill the data. How we fill the data? We create an image with these parameters. We map that image. We load each plane to that image. And then we will map the, 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 the image. Afterwards, we create a video format, the video info format. With this information, we create a pool, of, sur of a surface pool. We did without meta information. And then we uh, extract from that pool a proxy, a surface proxy. From that surface proxy, we get the surface, the real surface, and we put the image. And we do the encoding. For, for, that, for that purpose, we create a video codec frame. We do associate it to the user data the proxy. We put the frame into the encoder. We wait something, and we have the encoded buffer. From the encoded buffer, we create a normal GST buffer, GST buffer, and we copy the information from that encoded buffer to the normal GST buffer. This is the case for an encoding of H264. So this library also provides another stuff. <clears throat> As I told you earlier, we need the information from the slice, the slice level. So the, we have a big problem here. We have to reparse each frame as we receive it in the in the in the decoder, at least in the decoder, because the the parsers in GStreamer doesn't provide yet all that information. So we receive the, the the frame and we reparse it in order to extract all the frame information and the slice information for every codec. Uh, we also have a, lo a lot of OpenGL helpers in order to render images in OpenGL context, either in EGL and GLX. And also we have a lot of window in protocols helpers for DRMM, Wayland, X11, and so on. Uh, we have split the libraries in order to avoid dependencies, uh, uh, to fulfill dependencies for every system. So, so we have the main library, the DRM family, the X11, GLX, EGL, and Wayland. And finally, we have these just trimmer elements, which is one Bapi the code, which handles all the codecs available. It does it by runtime checking what is available in the in your hardware or in your backend, and setting the the caps when you when you request them and tell you what's available caps in your hardware in runtime when it is in pulse state or playing state. There's a, a Bapi sync, which is uh, which renders. Um, there's a Bapi post proc, which you do all the post-processing things. And we have another uh, hackish element, which is the, the code bin, uh, which is a, a, a bin with the decoder and the post-processor. If your computer doesn't support the post-processor, it doesn't attach it. It's only a, just a wrapper for the WAPI decode. Uh, we did it that way because it's more, uh, has a bigger performance if you have the decoder and the post-processor tied together. Uh, there are also the encoders. These, in this case, they are split by each uh, codec. We have the encoder for 2H64, MPEG2, JPEG, B BP8, and HAVC. There's also the, we have parsers. In this case, we have parsers because sometimes we, ha we want to, to deliver some uh, New, for, for example, in this case, the, the, the MBC, the multi-views, they are not still in, 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 for, in, in, uh, in the stable version of, just, of just streamer. so we provide to the clients we, another uh, parser for, to adding this information. And, but, but basically, we are copying what it is in, in, head of, in, ma in master of just streamer. We add some patches above it, and we rename it, basically, but it's just for, 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 for people that need new things that are not rich in stable versions of, of, of GStreamer. Also, it's the same case for the H265 parser. So 
Yeah, what, what is the challenge we are facing right now in the, in the project? This is what we want to, well, what we are, where are we aiming right now? Uh, this should not parse twice. We don't want to over, over load the performance, parsing twice uh, each frame. So we want to the, to, to the, the parser deliver us all the information we are required in order to do the, the decoding. So we have to, to that, add this metadata to, to parsers and negotiate that to, to the parser uh, in, in upstream that we want this metadata. Either in frame, to, in, in frame level or in slice level. So we have to work in those uh, uh, box. Uh, this shall allow to plug in hardware video filters, the interlations. Right now, the, the code bin is a hack in order to avoid this. Uh, it will be great if Playbin could negotiate this out the plugin in order to add the, the post processor plugin uh, when it's required, and so we could remove the BAPI decode bin. This shall reverse playback. Uh, we have a couple issues here. As we are reparsing all the frames, uh, the video decoder doesn't have to well test all the reverse playback in non-packetized decoders. I have some patches in there, but still need to be uh, take care of them. Also, we have another issue that um, when the, the, the reverse playback is just the, the whole group of pictures, and when your uh, uh, when, when your video video buffer pool only provides a, a small number of, of, of of frames, it gets a stall because the gap is bigger and it's waiting to, to add more pictures in the in the in the in that in the gap. So it, I want another I want another buffer and the video pool is rich out of, of buffers. Um, also this shall support DMA booth, something that Julian is doing. Thanks for it. Um, this is a big issue for us uh, because we are lagging. As I told you before, uh, GistVapi handles its own OpenGL stuff, but now GistGL is doing a lot of more and is doing it better. And for example, we are not supporting right now OpenGL 3, and sometimes when a GL image sync is negotiated, request OpenGL 3, and it doesn't work here. Uh, another stuff that is messing around because the, the GL stuff. For, and we have this meta bug with all the GL box that we have right now. Uh, this is another small problem that you should not cache all the display. So we have to do, remove the display cache. Because, well, uh, that using the context, we can remove all this that stuff. And that's it. Questions? Well, he's asking why we didn't need the display for the H.264 encoder, for example, encoder. Uh, because, it's part, because we need to access to the hardware, and it's, this access to the hardware is true, as far as I understand, to the, to the display. You can use the RM, uh, the, uh, direct render ma management of memory, which is the kernel. You, don't, you, can, you can do headless encoding and decoding. Yes. Is right now available. You can grab it from the GitHub. You can look at it from the GitHub. I haven't tried it. I don't, I don't know where. If I don't. Some people are using it, but I haven't tried it by myself, so I don't know for sure. Yes. Uh, hmm? That's a good question. Uh, there, this has me if, if you can run encoders by parallel. Uh, I don't know. Three. Do, do you know that? Encoding. Yes. I don't know. I guess it depends also on the hardware, obviously, how many, how many instances of the the cutting and cutting. Of course. Yes. It can draw us in. Well, they're asking me if is the problem with OpenGL that we cannot uh, paint in OpenGL textures. 
yes, we can in GLX and using OpenGL normally, no tree, and also works for EGL. But there are some backends that is not supported because uh, the library doesn't can handle the the issues of its implementation of OpenGL. For example, I know there is some problems with the uh, FGLRX. How is the name of that? Yeah. Uh? Radian, yeah. There's some issues with Radian, yeah. Any other question, yeah? Uh, no, the back end, as far as I know, doesn't. Uh, they're asking me if uh, we can use the encoder in the NVIDIA card. And the back ends right now doesn't support it. But if you add it, we will be great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go to the coffee break. Thank you for being here. So, Thank you for your patience.